Welcome to ADP Training, YouTube's automotive technology channel. In this channel, you'll learn all kinds of auto repair secrets, how your automobile works, and how to diagnose it. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, talk about the uh, automotive CAN bus uh, voltage testing. And we're also going to explain how and how the, the, the voltage that you see at any CAN vehicle, how these, uh, uh, how you arrive at these voltages. Um, and there's, um, there's a lot behind it. So anyhow, bear with us. But first, a few basics. This is the basic OBD2 uh, DLC uh, data link connector on any automotive, uh, on any automobile um, uh, made um, after 1996. Um, in this particular case, almost everything nowadays after ninth, everything became CAN uh, controller area network, which was uh, was developed originally by Bosch. Uh, so now pin number six and fourteen are the ones that are going to carry the signal. Now these are the pins mandated by law. Uh, they all have, have has to have uh, pin number six and fourteen running CAN. Uh, they may, uh, for example, the slow, there's a slow can and there's different variations of can uh, that run on pins number one, for example, and this, this and that. We're not going to talk about that. We're just going to concentrate uh, on can vehicles controlling area network as it is mandated by OBD2. As you've been seeing on screen, uh, this is the OBD2 health meter. Uh, it is a uh, dedicated unit that we actually manufactured and designed and developed, which just introduces in, into the market. Uh, so it's uh, very handy when it comes to uh, OBD2 diagnostics, uh, running, uh, testing power and grounds and, and so on and, forth, uh, and so forth. Uh, the, the video is not necessarily about this unit, but it's just you know basically we uh, some of the stuff that you see on this uh, on this video were actually captured or enforced by the uh, uh, the obd2 health meter very quickly as you can see on screen uh, this unit is loaded with a bunch of uh, electronics inside that actually stress um, the power the dlc power the chassis ground the sensor ground the pin number 16 uh, power um, oftentimes you have issues with that and the and the, and the sensors and the set the grounds and you you really don't know unless you actually test them and they're causing all kinds of problems on your uh, on your uh, readings uh, uh, for the for the scanner. And it's not there's nothing wrong with anything. It's just that you have a a, a, a faulty ground or, or power. So the unit has these big resistors uh, on top, as you see on screen um, on, in yellow. Uh, there are 20 ohm resistors that I, the unit actually shorts the ground and the power, uh, and it actually. Um, uh, measures, you know, there's a computer inside that actually measures, the, and there's a screen as you saw, uh, uh, as you actually can see on screen right now. Um, anyhow, and there's uh, there's also other stuff in there too. You can actually substitute the 60 ohm termination resistors with this unit. Uh, it actually injects a voltage also uh, on the CAN uh, signal in case you're missing it. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff, you know, that that you can actually do with this unit, uh, and that it, it actually if it, you need to understand about CAN vehicles and, and how it, it is structured, and that we're going to talk about that here. As you can see on screen, this is what a uh, a CAN network uh, has to uh, has to look like. They're all the same. The only thing that, that that changes is the amount of modules, and this is a simple CAN where you see the instrument cluster, the uh, transmission control module, the ACM. Um, uh, th there's also the uh, ABS uh, module in there, and as you can see, you have you have to have two termination resistors, and this is this is basic when it comes to uh, to CAN networks. Uh, between the two termination resistors, if you if you have two resistors in parallel, as you see on screen on this diagram, you're going to have 60 ohms. If you measure the uh, the two pins, pins number six and 14, you're going to have 60 ohms and that's exactly give or take a couple of ohms usually 60 uh, 62 63 58 something like that doesn't have to be exact but close uh, so basically you're gonna once you have two 120 ohm uh, um, resistors in parallel you're gonna have 60 ohms across both um, 
uh, wires, you know, on, on the can. And these are usually twisted pair uh, wires. They're, they're twisted, and this is to prevent uh, EMF uh, e e electromagnetic interference. Now, it is important that these uh, 120 ohm resistors, you may lose one of them. And depending on the vehicle, it may or may not operate. Uh, but you need to find where these, and this is usually, the instrument cluster is the one, is one of them that almost always has the one, one of the 120 ohm termination resistors. The ACM normally carries the, the other 120 ohm resistor. Now, if you lose these resistors, oftentimes you have no communication. And if you measure across these two wires, basically pins number 6 and, and, uh, and 14, you're not going to see 60 ohms. You're going to see, you might see 120 ohms, or you might see infinite. That means you lost both resistors. Or you may see zero. That means you're shorted. That means the uh, CAN network is shorted. Uh, the two wires are shorted. Then you're not going to have communication. In our video here, we're going to initiate communication. We're going to show you what it looks like on an oscilloscope. And this is probably the best way to do it. Now, uh, but before we go into that, basically um, uh, the unit, as you can see on this particular diagram, uh, the OBD2 connector has gives you access. Uh, this is the easiest way to give you access to these two pins, pins number 6 and 14. Okay. Uh, our unit, uh, the uh, OBD2 DLC health meter, actually goes in there and plugs into uh, um, power and ground on pins number uh, um, 16, which is power, uh, 4, uh, 5, and, and that's it. That's how you, put, you power the unit. On a 4, 6, and 14 for the CANT network. Uh, the unit then substitutes a bunch of, depending on the tests that you actually pick on your on screen, it's got the, it has a little screen, a uh, touch screen in, in there, and you you actually choose either the automated test and it actually runs the, the all the testing in there, uh, or you can actually p uh, pick and choose uh, which test you actually want. It has a um, like an oscilloscope, but it's not an oscilloscope. It's more of a uh, uh, graphing multimeter where you can actually see what we're going to see now. We're going to see that later on in, the, in this video. Uh, you can actually see the the, the signals. Uh, and you'll know right away. And the unit is also going to analyze the signal for you. This is what's different about this unit than anything else. That you you can plug in anything you want, like an oscilloscope and this and that. And if you don't don't know exactly what to look for, which we're going to show you here anyways. Uh, but some of you may not really be into it, you know. And you still have a car with no communication. So what are you going to do? So this unit it's automated and it it goes into. Uh, a bunch of tests that you don't even know that it's doing it, and it, it's pretty much, in a, it'll tell you, you know, if you have an issue. Now, on screen, let's start by analyzing the signal that you're going to see, either on the unit, on the OBD2, uh, OBD2 um, DLC health meter, or on an oscilloscope. In this particular case, we uh, are going to use an oscilloscope because the screen is bigger, and we can actually show you in, in a better format. Um, basically what we did, and you're going to see later on in the video, you're going to see that we actually made a virtual CAN network, uh, and this is what we're doing right now. But anyhow, what you see right now, it's a, uh, th this is the CAN signal for both wires, okay? The yellow one is for the CAN low, and the green one is for the CAN high. Now, very carefully, let's look at the screen uh, as you see it right now on this, on this particular diagram. If you were to measure with, a, with an uh, ohmmeter uh, the resistance between the two uh, wires, okay? Not the resistance, I'm sorry, the, uh, the voltage with the, uh, with the vehicle key on, engine off. Uh, basically, what you would see between the two uh, CAN wires, CAN low and CAN high, pins number uh, 6 and 14, you're going to see zero volts. Okay, this is important because everybody gets confused when they see it. They say, well, I have zero volts, I have no, com so I have no communication, zero volts, something's wrong. No, you're, you're supposed to see zero volts. In the, uh, in the old days, back in the 70s and 80s, uh, sometimes we used to install radios, car radios, uh, which had a floating grounds. The speakers had floating grounds. There, were, there was no gr the ground for the speakers was not the same as the vehicle ground, and so they were you know finicky you know back then. People would not understand that. And so basically, this is what it is. Uh, a can system has a floating ground. 
So the ground has nothing to do with the, uh, with the battery ground. So if you measure, measure across the uh, can high and can low, pins number 6 and 14, you, it's going to be 0 volt. Now, uh, if, on the other hand, you measure, and as you see now, we, ch we change the diagram, uh, between ground, the actual gr uh, um, chassis ground, which is it would be pin uh, pin number f um, chassis ground would be pin number four. Um, if you measure between chassis ground and one of the uh, and one of the wires, uh, either the can low or the can high, you're going to see 2.5 volts. Okay. So now going back to the uh, and this is basically what uh, the can uh, protocol calls uh, calls for. You have to have 2.5 volts between chassis ground and uh, either can low or can high. Now, because both wires are the same uh, voltage potential between them, you see zero, okay? Now, um, we're gonna see on screen right now, this is, this is the, going back to the can bus, bus signal. Uh, basically, this signal, the yellow one is the can low and the, um, and the green one, the green half of it, is the can high. This is actually channels one and two of the scope, uh, which you actually, you know, if you go into with the, with the unit that we have, the uh, OBD2 health meter, you're going to see exactly the same. Uh, so basically, you're going to see um, the can low and the can high. Uh, it's not really superimposed because they don't switch at the same level. Uh, the can low is going to go between 2.5 and 1.5. We're going to see later on when I explain that. And the can high is going to switch between 2.5 and, uh, and 3.5. Between the two, uh, can low and can high, you have to have 2 volts. Okay? So as you see, as you can see on screen right now, the can high, uh, and this is uh, basically the, what the signal says, uh, the can high is at 3.43. On the high side, 2.5 on the basically on the um, uh, on the resting side, and uh, one point the, the low can low is 1.43 uh, on the low side, and again 2.5 on the resting side. This is called uh, the dominant and recessive. Okay, recessive will be the 2.5 for both signals, which is always at 2.5. In this particular case, it's actually 2.43, but this is doesn't have to be exact, but, but very close, okay? This is called recessive because it's always resting. If the can is not communicating, uh, basically you're going to have 2.5 volts, okay? This is uh, recessive. The, the dominant is when it actually switches either low or high. In this particular case, the can low is going to go to one point. Uh, 43 in this in this case you know or 2.43 uh, I'm, I'm sorry 3.43 on the on the can high which is the green side between the the difference between both can low and can high when it's switching has to be two volts otherwise the uh, obd2 the, the the can protocol it's not going to work okay and this is uh this last uh, uh, diagram actually the the snapshot that we have here it, it actually shows you that. It, it says, you know, between the high side and the low side on both signals taken together, this is called the delta, uh, which is a delta means difference. It's a Greek letter, which actually means uh, the difference between the two signals has to be two volts. You really don't care much about taking the difference between the, the, the two sides um, because it's ac you're actually going to see it, you know, like you see it right now when you put a scope in, the, in there either our unit or, or an actual oscilloscope. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, and you have to be careful too because sometimes, depending on the scope that you're using, sometimes the, uh, the actual scope ground is going to ground the signal. So be careful on how you do it. Otherwise, you're going to go nuts, you know, if you really don't know what you're doing. It's not, not going to damage anything, uh, but you're not going to see anything on, on screen and then you're going to go crazy. Anyhow, so again, remember that the voltage between uh, the, the center voltage, uh, which is, that's, that's called the recessive uh, CAN signal, is always going to be 2.5 volts when taken between the chassis ground and the actual signal itself, uh, or which is uh, the recessive is going to be 2.5, and the dominant is either going to be on the low side, it's going to be uh, um, 
1.43 in this particular case 1.4 so basically you, in this particular example we are 2.4 on the on the on the uh, recessive supposed to be theoretically 2.5 so basically theoretically 2.5 on the recessive which is the center as you see it here uh, and the uh, on the dominant on the low side on the can low is going to be 1.5 the can high is going to be 3.5 okay this is really the theoretical behind the can protocol uh, so between the two you have to have as you see here two two volts difference between the can low and the can high otherwise uh, the can uh, 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 chips you know the uh, the microprocessor is inside that actually detect the signal is they're not going to be they're not going to detect the signal and this is how you have to look at it otherwise then you, you could have for example a recessive of 2.5 or 2.4 more or less but then it's not switching all the way the on the low side the can low is not going to it's not switching maybe it'll give you um uh, two volts okay when it switches low and the can high is going to give you three volts not three point not three point five as you see here then you know you have an issue you could have resistance in the wires uh which is usually the case in one of the mo the nodes one of the modules uh, for whatever reason, you know, maybe the, there's a lot of humidity where the vehicle is being driven and this, this and that, and who knows, okay, but definitely you can't have that. You have to have between the two signals, two volts difference, otherwise the signal is not going to get recognized, pretty much. <coughs> now, as you can see on screen, we actually have a virtual network that we created uh, with these uh, gadgets that we have. They actually, th these are actually can uh, uh, transceivers that we have here, um, which we uh, we do a lot of experimentation with these guys. Now, what we did is we, we took an OBD2 connector and we rigged power and ground to it to uh, be able to power the, uh, the the little scanner that we have that we're going to use for testing. And then we the the yellow uh, wires that you see it's actually pins number six and fourteen for the CAN network. Okay, now. Uh, some of you have the idea that if the vehicle has a uh, and we're really going to go into this very briefly right now if the vehicle has a gateway that uh, all of a sudden everything is lost and there's nothing you could do that's not the case okay so in um, as you can see we're briefly we're going to explain this we're going to do another video on gateways so anyhow a gateway is a uh, it's a uh, it's a, uh, a module that actually uh, inter interconnects different modules together uh, with the ECM and with the DLC connector. Okay, so the gateway, it's uh, basically, it's uh, some, like a gatekeeper. That's why it's called a gateway. And so all the modules are connected to the gateway and the gateway decides who has the access to the gateway. Okay, uh, whoever has the access to the gateway has access to the other modules. That's not so in every single vehicle out there right now. They're starting to do that right now as we speak. Uh, this is the year 2019. Uh, anyhow, so uh, so basically a gateway is a gatekeeper for the different modules. And what it does is it actually uh, interconnects different speed modules. So you have the, the seat belt, uh, the seat, not the seat belt, the seat module, which is very slow. It doesn't have to be fast, so it's very inexpensive module. Uh, that actually needs to co needs to connect with the ECM and everybody else. Uh, you you don't want to have it in the same uh, signal. That everybody thinks that this is because of security and this and that. It's nothing to do with security because you can actually bypass the gateway very easily, as we're gonna we're gonna explain. So basically, what you do if you want to have access to the CAN network, you you're gonna have to remove the gateway and connect to the two uh, CAN uh, wires, the the CAN low and the CAN high. Um, uh, on the other side of the gateway, as you can see on screen right now. So the gateway, you know, restricts ac access to the other module unless you have the right scanner. Uh, but you don't, you know, like for example, on uh, Chrysler vehicles, you remove the gateway, which is right behind the radio. Uh, and basically you have access to, to, the, to the one wire, you know, the, the, the can, uh, signal wires, the can low and the can high. And once you have access to those, then you can actually access whatever module uh, you want. That's if you have the scanner that actually communicates with the gate. But if you just want to see that, you know, that the network is running properly, uh, that you can act, you actually you could do that manually by going to into the into the wires. 
this may not be necessary uh, on, on the vehicle that you're working on, but just uh, trying to explain to you that the gate, once you remove the gate, put the gateway out of, of, out of the, the picture, then you actually have access to the, to the CAN wire and you can actually do whatever you want. If you want to connect the scanner to it, fine. If you just want to see if you have the termination resistors, which is really what we're talking about here, uh, that's what, what this video is really for. And then you, you can actually do that. Uh, on the other side of the gateway. If you know that you have the termination resistors fine and the signals, the signaling it's okay, uh, then basically once you know that, then your problem is it's uh, whatever problem with the specific module uh, that you're trying to communicate with, uh, not necessarily a problem with the CAN network, uh, which is, again, this is the purpose of this video is to make sure that the actual physical um, uh, the, the physicality of the of the network it is there and basically you you're looking for the termination resistor it has to have two uh, regardless you know and uh, in this particular case if you have a gateway you, as you can see on screen you have interconnections between uh, uh, these guys they, we have actually three uh, three networks uh, on screen right now the one with the ABS is one network which has the ABS the cluster the TCM and then the and, and the other modules and then you have the other one which has a seat module 5 14 11 module 10 and 4 that's another network they're all interconnected to the gateway and each one has to have a, a termination resistor of 120 ohm uh, and the two of the, in this particular case for example the the module the network that has the ABS on it uh, you're going to have a termination resistor on the gateway itself and you're going to have a terminate not necessarily but usually it does and then another termination resistor uh, for example module 3 uh, the, which is all the way at the end it could be in any of, the, of those modules and you have to find out which one it is if you don't have that termination if you measure between those two and that particular network if you measure between the two wires they can low and they can high you don't see 60 ohms remember it's 120 ohms but you have to have two of these okay and that between the both of them, it's a, it's a, it's a 60, um, 60 ohm, but each one is 120 ohm resistor. So where is it? That's up to you to find out. And some, most oftentimes, it's not easy. Okay? And this is the issues with uh, when uh, uh, diagnosing problems with the, with the uh, communication with the CAN. As you can see on screen, uh, this is live. This is actually the, the scanner trying to establish communication. We're not necessarily connected. The, the virtual network that we have will give you the voltage levels and will give, give you the termination resistors, but it's not. You're not going to see anything because we're not dealing with uh, we're dealing with a CAN network. We're, we're not really connected to a car, and we really don't care. Even if you're doing uh, um, diagnostics on a regular vehicle, you're not you're not going to look at uh, see you know watch these uh, pulses in there and say, well, that pulse is for the ABS. I recognize that, but you'll never be able to recognize that pulse. You need a, a network analyzer for that, and it's really, you don't really need that. You don't really care what the pulses are. The, for that, you use a scanner, and you try and establish communication. If you don't have, if you have a problem with the, I don't know, for example, the uh, ABS module, okay? And the ABS module, it could be uh, the seat belt module, the, the, or the seat module, the, 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 power, you know, the power window module, whatever. And you basically, you, you have no community. You try and establish communication with the uh, with a module that that's that's not communicating. And usually, what you have is you're going to have co uh, faulty codes uh, uh, on the on the other modules. Uh, no communication with the uh, ABS module, for example. And everybody else is going to have no communication with the ABS module. So if you look at the TCM, the transmission, you look at the ECM, you look at the everybody else, no communication with the ABS module. So the ABS module is not communicating. So you look at the network, where, what it's uh, connected to, uh, and if you, if you definitely have uh, the terminations in, in there, the 60 ohms between the two, the can low and the can high, and you have the voltage, 2.5 volts, between ground and e either either one of the uh, of the can okay, the, the can low and the can high, then you have your physicality is there. That basically what you have to do then is find out why you don't have communication with the ABS module. It could be the ABS module itself is shot. Uh, it could be the uh, the wires are, are one of the wires is um, cut. You know, uh, somehow broken, uh, and you have no communication or whatever. You know, uh, but you deal with it then you know that your your problem is not necessarily uh, a, a broad problem with the uh, with a can 
if you have no uh, no 60 ohms between the two cables between the two wires can low and can high then you have to start tracking why and in which case you're not going to have communication with a bunch of the modules going back into the uh, the uh, gateway that you saw before uh, you're gonna then you have to find out you know how many networks do you have because you could have three you could have two or three networks and each each network is going to have a, a, a specific uh, um, bunch of different modules and you have to find the modules that you're trying to establish communication with and find out why you don't have communication usually if it's a broad problem you're going to have no communication with all the modules on that particular uh, and sometimes the gateway itself is shot and it actually has communication with the other modules but not with the network that that's uh, defective you have to find all these problems basically with what you've learned in this video uh, you can actually do that. It is possible for you to do that. It's going to require, you know, some disassembly on your end, uh, trying to, uh, uh, s you know, see which, you know, where, where to find the gateway and where to, where to do this, this and that. And oftentimes, you know, the, you do have a gateway module which, uh, that does not restrict communication uh, to the scanner. So again, it's, uh, there are variations of, of this, of what we're talking about in this video. But the basic uh, knowledge that you're, gonna, that you're gaining right now with this video is going to help you uh, fix almost any, any problem uh, that's related to the network, you know, to uh, CAN networks, you know. Uh, and again, you know, we, uh, um, you know, if you have the unit that we have, it's actually, it's handy because it, it does a bunch of stuff, you know, that, that usually you have to do it manually. It's not that you need our unit, but it's, it's a good thing to have. Uh, and basically, that this is what we do in this video so that you actually learn to analyze the uh, uh, and uh, and pinpoint the uh, certain factors you know like uh, resistance between the cables and this and that termination resistors uh, the whether you have a gateway or not which uh, how many uh, networks do you have how many modules what's connected to what and so on and so forth anyhow uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel adp training uh, we suggest that you subscribe to our, ch our channel if you like it or uh, to our website automotive diagnostics and publishing it's actually autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com uh, you can find us on uh, on, um, on uh, facebook you can find us uh, uh, at autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com that's our facebook page uh, or our, on instagram um, adp training uh, backslash or under underscore uh, YouTube, which is ADP training. It's our YouTube channel, okay? Which is basically, you know, anything that's automotive on the high end side. We go into the complicated issues, you know, with uh, um, uh, with our automotive technology. This is it, okay? So anyhow, we'd like to thank you for tuning in uh, to our channel, ADP training, and thank you for watching. This channel is for do-it-yourselfers as well as professional auto repair technicians. We present all the content using the latest CG animation techniques, on hands video, and how to, tips and techniques. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel now. Once subscribed, anytime we upload a new automotive tip, secret, or technology video, you will be notified. Finally, by subscribing, you will also be part of our weekly freebies. Yes, we're constantly giving away lots of free merchandise. Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing's Mandy Concepcion, the owner of this channel, is one of the most prolific auto technology authors on the web. At any moment in time, we may offer a free book, Kindle eBook, Android app, one of our own diagnostic equipment, or even auto repair software that runs on your PC. Subscribe now free of charge. Learn lots of automotive technology secrets, and win free stuff. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks for watching, and enjoy.